Welcome, everybody. I'm Peter Denning, host of the Harnessing AI course series for you. Today, we're going to take a look at another aspect of artificial intelligence in practice, which is the management of the projects that actually produce the use of the AI in operational settings. Those of you who are familiar with anything at all with software engineering, you should know that software projects don't happen with a, typically with a single programmer writing out the programming and then it all works. You know, those of you who have done programming already know that programming seems to be an inherently error-prone process. The people try very hard not to make mistakes and they somehow always make mistakes. You see, so you have to manage the software development process very carefully or you're going to wind up with unusable software. It also gets very messy when you have software that's written by, so big it's written by many people. So you have programming teams and you have to manage the teams or it won't come together and you won't have useful software. So there's a whole bunch of issues that come up when you have teams of people producing software it's going to be used by multiple users over multiple versions. It gets very complicated. And if you don't do it right, you wind up with unusable software. Artificial intelligence software is no different. We have to build these systems. Some of them are complex. They need to be carefully managed or they just won't be usable. And artificial intelligence systems also have their own peculiarities which have to enter into the management process. So today we have Professor Rene Renon from the Defense Management School here to talk to you about this problem. He's going to talk to you about it, obviously from the management perspective, of how do you organize these projects so that they have a chance to turn out useful, reliable, dependable software. So Rene, the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Denning, and thank you all for attending this uh, session on management of AI projects. As uh, Professor Denning said, I am uh, Rene Rendon. I'm from the Graduate School of Defense Management. I teach in the Defense Acquisition and Defense Contract Management degree programs. Uh, prior to arriving at NPS, I spent over 20 years in the Air Force as a Systems Acquisition Contracting Officer, uh, acquiring space systems on at Los Angeles Air Force Base and aeronautical systems at uh, Wright-Patterson Air Force Base. So today, we're going to discuss the management of AI projects. AI, or artificial intelligence, initiatives typically fail. About 85% of AI initiatives do not produce the intended results. And one of the major reasons for that is because of ineffective project management practices. And what we're going to discuss today here are some of the components of a project management methodology, specifically looking at the project life cycle and the activities that occur during an AI project. I'm also going to look at the, pro we'll also discuss the project teams. So one of the things that project, one of the reasons why project management came to be was because normal management practices were inefficient and insufficient for managing projects and project activities. And that's why project management came to be. And we will find out later today that AI project management practices are different and unique from traditional project management practices. The AI life cycle is different from the traditional program or project management life cycle that, that we know of in, for example, weapon systems acquisition. So one of the things we're going to cover, or as an overview, what I'm going to cover today is, um, is an overview of project management and then look at what we consider, what are some components of project management methodology, and then we'll get into AI life cycle phases for an AI project. And then we'll finish up with project management challenges. So as I mentioned before, project management came to be or was developed because traditional management practices were insufficient for managing project activities. When we're dealing with projects, we need to know, we need to ask ourselves the 10 basic key questions related to projects. And these are, these are those questions. All projects involve the answers to these questions. For example, what are the tasks that need to be accomplished? And that's your project scope. 
What are the, what's the order of activities in which these tasks need to be accomplished? That's your schedule. How much will these activities cost? What are the standards, like quality standards, that must be met in the performance of these activities? What resources will be required in performing these activities? And these are internal resources. We also look at what information is required in performing these project activities. AI requires a lot of data and a lot of, uh, a lot of data and, and, and prepared data as we, as we conduct our AI activity. So we'll see, we'll see some more about that. Uncertainty. What uncertainty lies in these project activities? And that relates to risk. And then, of course, external resources. This is procurement. Which activities are going to be performed by external organizations, like contractors? Maybe the data that we need in, the, in our AI project is controlled by the contractor, which would then add to the cost of accessing that data. And then what people are involved in this project? We're going to discuss project team here in a few minutes. And then finally, how are all of these activities integrated? And so regardless of whether you're using a DOD 5000 approach or you're using any other project management methodology approach, all projects require the answering of these 10 questions. So in addition to answering these 10 questions, or answering these 10 questions will get you to your project management methodology. And when we talk about project management methodology, our major components is a formal project team and an appropriate life cycle. The project team reflects the needed skills of the project. And it should be led by a designated project manager. And it should be authorized by a formal project charter. If you've been designated a project manager and the, the, author, the authorizing official doesn't want to provide you a charter, you should run, run away. Okay, because you need the charter that gives you the authority to, do, to manage your project. And then, of course, the project life cycle, the phases, the milestones, decision points that are needed to control, to monitor and control the, pro the, pro the progression of the project. Okay, so let's look at the project team. For an AI project team, you're definitely going to need a project manager, data scientists, data engineers. You're also going to need software developers, and more important, I think, is a domain expert. If your AI project is the application of AI technologies to maintenance, for example, the maintenance of a tank or the maintenance of a helicopter, you're going to need domain experts who are, who are expert in those areas. Helicopter maintenance, for example, or tank maintenance. And what you as a, pro as a project manager will realize that each one of these individuals are experts in their own area, data management, data scientists, aircraft maintenance or engine maintenance. But they don't know anything about any other areas. And that's, that's going to be key for integrating the activities of these, of these individuals. Okay. So in addition to the project team, project life cycle. Traditionally, PM life cycles were monitoring and controlling the progress of the project. You don't go from milestone A until you're authorized to go to milestone B, milestone C. This is for defense acquisition. You don't go to, to, to CDR until you've completed PDR. You don't complete mission or material solutions analysis. Uh, or you don't start the technology development and risk reduction until you've completed material solutions analysis. You don't start production until you finish engineering and manufacturing development, and so forth. Very structured. In AI project management, the life cycle is not as structured. The life cycle is more fluid. You may be repeating activities in your phases before you go to the next phase. We do that a lot in defense acquisition. We shouldn't do it. We shouldn't do it. We should not start testing 
until the design is stable. We shouldn't start de a designing until the technology is stable or mature. Of course, you don't want to go into production until your testing is completed and successful. We don't always do that in the DOD. In AI, there, there's an iterative approach in these life cycle phases. And we're going to go through each one of these phases and discuss the activities that occur within each of these phases. Okay. So project planning, that's, that's the first phase. What problems are we solving? So what you're focusing here is understanding the business requirement. And you're getting to answering the questions, what problems are we trying to resolve? And how will, how will uh, AI solve that problem? So understanding what does the end state look like? What are our success metrics? Who are the stakeholders, both internal and external? What skills do we need in solving that problem? Skills that we need to have in our project team. And of course, what are the project tasks that we need to incorporate into our project? All of this is part of determining the business requirements or understanding the business requirement. The overall goal may be to, for example, minimize the scheduled, downtime, the scheduled maintenance downtime of a helicopter. But the AI application will be specifically for determining what are the cost drivers of flying a helicopter. What are the mission drivers? What are the maintenance drivers? What are the cost drivers? That would be the AI application. The AI application will be part of a bigger pro or answering a bigger problem, which is how do we minimize the m scheduled maintenance uh, um, for our helicopters. So one of the problems that we see in AI is that the AI solution didn't really answer the problem. It only answered a subset of the problem. And then you still have to make some other decisions based on what the AI solution gave you. Understanding the anal or uh, determining the analytics approach is also part of the planning phase. What analytics approach are we going to use in our AI project? Are we going to use supervised learning, uh, supervised machine learning? That's where we know the outcome. We know what we're looking for. And we have a whole bunch of data that hopefully the AI technology can analyze that data and tell us what the outcome is. Or unsupervised machine learning, where we don't know what the outcome is. We just have a whole bunch of data, and we want the AI application to make sense of that data and show us the picture, the data visualization picture, so to speak, of our operations. And then we can identify maybe some opportunities for improving. The second phase is the data phase, data management phase. Determining what are our data needs. What data do we need? What format does that data come in currently in existence? What format does it need to be in? And, and where will that data come from? Is the data controlled by contractors? Maybe we have a C drill on a contract that requires a contractor to develop that data and to deliver it. Maybe we don't, and maybe we have to pay for that data. A lot of weapon systems, maintenance is performed by contractors. If we want to apply AI technology to a maintenance problem, that may be an issue if the contractor controls the data. How often will we need the data? Does the data have to be in any compliance requirements for us to use it? All of these answers, all, or all of these questions, has to do with determining or specifying the data requirements. And then once we specify the data requirements, we also have to collect the data. Who's going to collect the data? Who will collect the data? Data engineers, data scientists, domain experts. And as I mentioned before, do we have to pay to collect that data? The data in its current form may not be in the format we need for our AI application. And so how will resolve, how will resolve that? After we collect the data, we start conducting exploratory analysis. Is the data usable? Is the data clean? What are the main characteristics and attributes of the data that we're looking for? 
One of the problems that many organizations have is we have data silos. Every organization has their own data management system. And those data silos don't communicate with each other. They don't collaborate with each other. And your, your, your AI application may specifically need the combining, the combination, the integration of all of that data. So after we explore, we do our exploratory data analysis, finally we prepare the data. We clean the data, we correct any errors, and there's typically a lot of errors. I think I read some place where 80% of the project time is spent on data and cleaning the data. 80% of all project activities time is spent just on data. After we prepare the data, we start developing our model. Our model is going to get the data from all of the locations and then analyze the data, come up with some probabilistic formula to provide uh, information for a decision maker to make on scheduled maintenance or whatever, whatever the task we're looking at. So, so, so select the model. So here we are. We're going we're gonna to look and see what is the best model that we can use to implement our AI initiative. So it could be a regression type model. It could be um, uh, based on supervised learning or unsupervised learning approach. It could be a categorization model or a classification <coughs> model. There are, a, there are software applications like, like AutoML, Auto Machine Learning, is a, is a software application that will look at your data and look at a whole bunch of models that are available and identify which model would be most appropriate for your AI initiative. Uh, that speeds up the model selection process. Of course, that would be an external resource if you have to procure that auto ML software application. Once you've selected the model, you have to evaluate it and determine, test the model. Does, will the model work? So you have your collected data. You're going to use a percentage of that data that you haven't used before to test a model and make sure the model will analyze the data and, and, and conduct its, 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 uh, its, its, its formula or whatever it is you're instructing the AI application to do. You want to make sure that you don't overfit the data. That means that you don't make it so that a model works perfectly well with the data you have, but when you introduce new data, it doesn't work. So your model has to be able to accept all data and be able to successfully convert the data or use the data in, in its application. Once you've evaluated the model and you've decided that's the model you're going to use, you deploy it. So deploying the model is typically based or, or performed in a server type of environment. So you have the data coming in. For example, it's maintenance data on, on a helicopter. It's going into the server, and that's where your model is located, and your, 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 your model starts doing its work, and then providing the information, providing the output. The model receives the data flow, performs the analysis, and sends the results of the analysis to another system. Maybe there's a customer application or so forth. After you deploy the model, you continuously tune the model continuously tune the model. So monitoring the progression of the project, monitoring the model. I think one of the major differences between software development and uh, projects and AI projects is once you've deployed the model, tuning the model is continuous and continuous because the data environment is going to change. The data will be different. Will your model accept that data and be able to work it unbiased? Um, software applications, once you've, once you've deployed the software, unless the requirements change from the customer, it's pretty, gonna be, it's, it's pretty, gonna, it's pretty much going to run the way it is. But an AI project, the data environment is always changing. So tuning and training the model, not, not training, but tuning the model 
and monitoring the model is a significant part and a critical part of AI projects. And then finally, project review. So while the model is still being managed and monitored and tuned, you conduct an after action review of the project. What are the lessons learned? What are the best practices? What skills did we realize um, that we didn't have that's a lessons learned for the next time we do this type of an AI project? Which models that we looked at that really didn't work out or which models really worked out? So you should always have an after action uh, report or after action session for your project. In most projects, the project review is the end. The aircraft has been deployed, the weapon system has been deployed, and so forth. But in an AI project, the, the tuning of the model continues because the data will always be changing. You want to make sure that the model can continue to manage, manage the data. So I also have some, some challenges here uh, um, in terms of AI projects. So one, uh, number one, overestimating the potential of AI solutions. Remember, the problem may be minimizing the scheduled maintenance of an aircraft. AI may not, be, may not be able to solve that. AI may be able to determine what are the drivers of that, of that maintenance for that, for that weapon system. Is it a mission driver? Is it a maintenance driver? Is it a cost driver? AI can, develop, can determine that, but it may not by itself answer the overall question. There's still some additional work that needs to be done. So overestimating the potential of the AI solution. Overestimating the team's potential to implement the solution. So we may think our team members, our project team members, have adequate skill and competencies to perform the AI project. We may not. Maybe the data scientists and the data, and, and the data managers have their expertise, but maybe our domain experts don't don't have sufficient expertise in their domain area to be able to provide the input that's needed. Underestimating the time required for data preparation. As I mentioned before, research shows that 80% of the project time is devoted to just managing data. You're finding all of the different sources of data, all of the different silos that are needed, and then cleaning up the data. And and, 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 and deleting errors and, and ensuring it's in the, in, in the proper format and so forth. Difficulty in determining and measuring project success. Success metrics. If the project is minimizing scheduled maintenance downtime, and if your AI project doesn't answer the entire problem, then is it successful or is it not successful? After you first tuned in, after you first tuned the model, are you successful now? Well, what happens when the data environment changes and the model isn't accurate and responsive? Now you're not successful. So the model is always, the model is always working and you're always monitoring the works of the model. So it's hard to determine when do we declare success and move on. Heavy dependence on the availability and quality of data, well, as I mentioned before. One of the biggest challenges in applying AI projects is the data culture of organizations. We create data silos in, 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 in all of the silos that we have, organizational stovepipes, we have our own data sources. And a lot of these data silos do not collaborate or talk to each other. That's why the problem of quantity and quality, or availability and quality of data is so, is so significant. And then behavior of the model increases the uncertainty of the outcomes. You don't know how the model is going to continue to behave because you don't know how the data is going to change. As the data environment changes, the model could, will also change in terms of, it out, of its output. And that increases the uncertainty of the outcomes. And then finally, our last challenge here is the need for post-deployment planning for model maintenance. So as I mentioned, 
when you get to tuning the, the model, that's part of post-deployment of, of the model, post-deployment planning. Uh, and you need to continue to tune the piano or the, the model uh, because, as I mentioned before, the data environment always changes. And because of that, the data changes, which then results in whether the model can receive that data and manage it correctly. How am I doing on time? Okay. So, and so that's, that's my last slide. So, and as summary, remember the 10 key questions of project management. If you understand those questions, you can manage any project. When it comes to AI project management, you need to know the significance of the project team and the skills that are needed of members of the project team but you also need to know the project life cycle and the iterative nature of the project life cycle. Um, it's not the same as the waterfall software development project. It's not the same as the DOD 5000 or weapon systems acquisition project life cycle where you have phase, you have gates and decision points and milestones. You may be in, in the requirements, determining the requirements phase for a while and going back in. And then when you phase into the next data management phase, you may have to go back to the requirements phase. And then, of course, the project management challenges, data. The majority of the time will be spent on managing data and the quality of that data. And then after that, the majority of the time is going to be spent on tuning the model after the model has been deployed and as the data environment changes. And that's it. <coughs> Any questions? There's my references. Um, a good source is the playbook for project management uh, in data science and artificial intelligence projects by the Project Management Institute. It's a really good source for uh, uh, managing AI projects. 